plaintiff, Marjorie Williams, met the defendant her freshman year in college, and they became friends and ultimately roommates. Marjorie claims they got along as roommates until the defendant got mad that Marjorie was associating with a man whom she was interested in. Marjorie suing her former roommate for rent and harassment. Defendant Antoinette Iverson says while living with Marjorie, she called the police on Antoinette seven times in two months and then filed a bogus restraining order against her. She's countersuing for bills and emotional distress. Start with you. Okay. Well, Your Honor, I met um, Tony our freshman year of college at Bowling Green. Uh, we became friends. We lived in the same dorm. and we When had, was that? Um, this was fall 2011 when okay. we met. Um, we had a class together. We became friends, so our sophomore year we decided to get an apartment together. And we really didn't have any problems until the last four months of our lease um, when one of our neighbors, who was also just a mutual friend, he came over um, and he just randomly brought food and was like, hey, I'm in a rush for work. If you cook this, um, I'll let you have some when I come back. So I was like, okay, whatever, that's random, that's fine. I mean, I know who he is. So I was cooking and uh, Tony came home and she was like, oh, you made dinner. So I explained to her the situation and she started getting really upset. About what? Um, she was interested in him, which took me by surprise because she had been with her boyfriend and they mm -hmm. were serious. How did you find out she was interested in him? She started <laughs> alluding to it, um, like as time went on, she'd be like, why would you be, you know. Time doing went on as in how long? I don't know the exact amount of time, but she had stopped talking to me after that day for weeks until she asked me to pay the difference on um, our bills. We had, she had okay. two bills in her. Let me hear from you. Okay, so actually, um, Marjorie, Marjorie and I were living together and we were roommates. Um, the situation that she's talking about, first of all, she violated girl code, okay? Um, yes, I was in a relationship, but um, the guy who lived in our apartment complex was my friend first, and she knew that he liked me, only I wasn't interested in him. Um, the incident that she's talking about, I had come home from class one day, and she's in leggings and a sports bra, and she has like a tray of food, and I'm like, where are you going dressed like that? She's like, oh, I'm going to take him some food, and I'm just like, he was my friend, so he would come over and hang out with me, okay. and she'd come dressed out in like leggings okay. or in short shorts what was and everything. Wrong with that? It's inappropriate. Why? Because this it's a guy in the house. Don't come dressed in like a leggings and a she sports bra. She wanted to tempt him. Exactly. <laughs> so what was, what was wrong with that? Didn't you, didn't you just say you yes, weren't, be quiet and listen. Didn't you just say you weren't interested in him? No, but it's girl code. No, no, I said, did you say you weren't interested in him? Yes, I did say. I and that means that. it sounds like from what you're saying, she was. She was my best friend. So what? She's interested in a man and that you're not interested in? <laughs> what code? I'm missing something. Me too. I'm missing something. <laughs> you like the dog that want to sit on top of the hay. He don't want to eat it and don't want nobody else to eat it. <laughs> he just go sit on top of the hay. Yeah, I don't want the hay, but you can't have none. <laughs> She was my best friend. So what? She's interested in a man and that you're not interested in? What code? I'm missing something. Me too. I'm missing something. <laughs> you like the dog that want to sit on top of the hay. He don't want to eat it and don't want nobody else to eat it. <laughs> he just go sit on top of the hay. Yeah, I don't want the hay, but you can't have none. <laughs> Plaintiff Marjorie Williams is suing her former roommate who claims Marjorie called the police on her seven times in two months and then filed a bogus restraining order against her. Go ahead, what else, ma'am? So did, is that why you all stopped speaking no, for weeks? No, that's not why we stopped speaking. She just started doing things out of spite, like she stopped paying her bills. She stopped paying. I have text messages from her that where I was asking her for the bill money and she said that she wasn't gonna pay me the bill money because I was being ridiculous. Good enough. Why are you suing her for unpaid rent and harassment? At the time, I was unaware that she wasn't paying um, the full amount of rent. We, although it was a joint lease and our parents were co-signers for it, we actually paid separately, completely the whole time. So basically, after moving out and going through all of this, I got a letter um, in the mail and it had all of our names on it. And it was saying that we owed, it was from the leasing company mm -hmm. saying that we owed like $660 for 
rent, cleaning fees, and everything. So this took me by surprise. So I go to the leasing agency, and that's the first time that I saw the register of the different payments that were made. So they totaled it up, the two payments that I made, and showed that I paid my lease obligation in full. And then her payments were sporadic. Like one month it was like $10, other stuff, and then she didn't end up paying her complete contribution. So at that time, when they told us about the cleaning fees, I went ahead and paid half of those because you know, an apartment, yeah. that's fine to share. So what did she fail to pay? She failed to pay the $526.94 for what she owed for rent. Okay, and when you mentioned it to her, what has she said? Well, what happened was, because it was so far after, mm -hmm. um, they were just about to take us to court. So mm -hmm. the claim that they had against us was for $740. We were able to settle for 500, mm -hmm. which is even less than she originally owed for rent. And all I was doing was asking in the letter um, to, for Let her to pay me back. see what you're making reference to. Thank you. Yes. All right, this is the lawyer's uh, letter. And the lawyer says, based on the ledger card that he received and read from the landlord, you owe. What do you say about the rent, ma'am? The last couple of months, or the last month and a half, I did not pay the rent because she just made living with her unbearable. She had called the police on me seven times within two months. She filed a frivolous <coughs> restraining order against me. For what? For asking... What does she allege? She alleged that I was harassing her or that I um, was violating her well-being or harming was her well-being. Was she specific? Yes, I was, Your Not Honor. I have the restraining order here. Yes, but it was denied, so she wasn't specific enough. Was it denied? It was denied. She it was, didn't... It was not made into a permanent restraining order, but I was granted a temporary restraining order to protect myself while I was in the court That was prior to, going, prior to a hearing, right? Yes. So it All was right, denied. but when you came to a hearing, the judge dismissed it. Yes. How many days... 30, 60, 90? I don't remember the specific amount, but the hearing was after the fact, and I just wanted it to keep record of all right. the Right, and what was discussed at the hearing? Um, she said the same thing that she said here. She just denied it. Okay, and the judge, did I, he indicate why he believed her over you? Because we were gonna, well, it's not that he believed her over me, but we were gonna be moving out soon. So okay, so that's why he dismissed it says, the petition. It says, petitioner right. failed to uh -huh. prove that she was in danger of physical harm or mental distress. That's what it says, This is the court papers here. You don't know. I mean, I just have what it was for. I don't have the end part. All right. And so, did you call the police on the seven times? I don't know if it was seven, but I did okay. call. I have Good a police enough. report. She um, was telling, like, all of our friends, mm -hmm. we're in a mutual organization. Mm -hmm. She was just telling everyone that I was just, like, a horrible person. She was demeaning no, I my I thought character. you said the police. Oh, the police. What, she told the police? Yeah. Yeah, she called the police and told them that I had assaulted her because she came... Seven home. times? No, the first time, the initial time. After what about that, the other six? The other six, she said that I was damaging her property. And they came? And, um, yeah. The police came seven times. No, not seven times. That's like what she... I'm asking you. How many no. times did the police come? The police came about five times. Okay, well, that's significant. <laughs> Ma'am, did you call the police five times and they came? I don't think they came five times. I remember maybe two or three. Okay, and what was the result? Well, the result, well, they basically... Was anyone issued a ticket? And was she prosecuted? Was she arrested? No, she wasn't. At all those times. Okay, and so you say it was harassment. Yes. What else? Um, how did she harass you? Basically, at first, she started having people call my phone. I had no idea who the people were, mm -hmm. saying that if I didn't pay her the, like, difference in bills, um, something was going to happen to me mm -hmm. or I had to pay her. Um, that's when I started filing uh, the police reports and documents. Against her? No, I notified that. In no, we're talking order. about calling about her, not calling about, about phone her. calls. No, when, she, when I called the police about her, it's because in our house, she would, like, confront me or be very hostile, mm -hmm. like she would bump into me, she threw a trash can You at say me. you don't know how many times. You all stayed there together. Anybody throwing trash cans at you, you don't stay there. You go home to mom or you go somewhere to stay. You don't stay in a dangerous I, situation. The reason that I was fine with that is because I was granted the temporary mm -hmm. restraining order, which stated that she wasn't... Right. If you go right now to the, and to the police or to the prosecutor and you say, Doyle looked at me in a way that caused me fear for my life, you'll get a restraining order. But when that hearing comes, you'll have to prove it. And they'll probably do just like they did when she came to the hearing. Say to you, you haven't proved a thing. 
and we don't believe you. So temporary restraining order, just about anybody can get that with just about any allegation. People use that all the time. The husband comes in late at night. What do you say? You lock the door. They bang on the door. Oh, I'm going to get a restraining order. Because you stayed out too late. That's an old game people use, ma'am. And when the hearing comes, the game is over then, as it was in your case. And that's the harassment you're talking about is getting phone calls. Yes, I would Okay, say. phone calls. Good enough. And you admit to owing the rent. Your only defense is that she harassed you. That had nothing to do with paying the rent. Plaintiff Marjorie Williams is suing her former roommate, who claims Marjorie called the police on her seven times in two months and then filed a bogus restraining order against her. Your counterclaim for unpaid bills and emotional distress. Sounds like you were about to tell me something else that she did to cause you emotional distress. Yes, she contacted the regional director of our organization, mm -hmm. telling them that um, she had gotten a restraining order against me, telling them that she wanted me removed from our organization. She completely like slaughtered my character to all of my organization. And then I received an email from our president telling us that, um, telling me that he would have to do a, a formal investigation on me because the situation was that serious and that there was a risk. Yes, I have the email from here. Yes, when we're we're in a business fraternity and uh -huh. it's part of it that you, if you have a serious conflict with a brother, you're supposed to let the organization know and that's the standard really? practice that they do, yes. Okay, so if she's making too much noise with her man at night, you let the organization know? <laughs> no. Get out of here. Show me that, show me that policy. Show me the policy where you're allowed to call and hurt the character and reputation of a woman in a campus organization. Show me that. It wasn't to hurt her reputation. That's exactly what it did. Show me where you can report your personal activities to a campus organization. Do you have that? No, I don't have All right, I know you don't, and I don't believe you. Just like this judge didn't believe all those restraining orders, your claim is granite, and so is yours uh, for $527, not the harassment. You get not a dime for harassment. You get $1,000 for your emotional distress that you're asking for. And I believe that she hasn't paid her bills either. So $1,186 for you and $527 for you. All right, good luck. really don't make an effort to talk to her or go out of my way to talk to her, so it's just gonna be the same. Um, I don't wanna be friends with her because clearly she's a liar and she doesn't hold her responsibilities. What kind of person is raised to leave people with fun? She was clearly harassing me and was lying about it in court, so that's just something she's gonna have to live with. She's not a good person. Oh my gosh, okay.